In this presentation, we're going to discuss the method of characteristics for basic first order partial differential equations, PDEs. And this particular equation, uh, A and B are constants, use a function of two variables, and the subscripts, u sub x, u sub y, they mean just the partial derivatives with respect to x and with respect to y, respectively. Now, the method of characteristics actually involves some really, really nice geometric arguments based on a calculus two course, like vector calculus, multivariable calculus. So I wanted to give you some insight into how to solve this problem and the method of, via the method of characteristics and the method itself. Okay, so what we want to do is find a function u of two variables, x and y, that satisfy this, uh, this equation. Okay, so what we're going to do is actually look at the structure of the left-hand side of the, PD, the boxed PDE. Okay, so <clears throat> if you look at um, the terms, you can write, so let's call this star, Left hand side is just the following. Okay, so essentially by those doubles, I mean vectors. I'm just not going to write i's and j's. Okay, now from vector calculus, this should look rather familiar. It's the gradient, it's the gradient of uh, u. Okay. Okay, so we use this Nabler type um, notation to denote the gradient. All right, so we know that from the different differential equation, this dot product is zero. Now, this dot product is almost is almost the directional derivative of u in the direction of the vector a comma b. But it's not quite because we don't actually have a unit vector here. But because the, the whole thing's equal to zero, the dot product's equal to zero, we can write it like this. So this then tells you that the directional derivative of the solution u to this problem in the direction of the vector a, b is zero. Okay, so, so what does that mean? Well, we'll discuss that. So the directional derivative of u in the direction of the vector a, b is zero. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, essentially, it means that the solution must be constant. Okay, th th think of, think of the, just, just forget, if you've for, forgotten about the d directional derivative, just think of the word derivative. If the derivative of something's zero, it's got to be, the, the function has to be constant, right? So, what this says is that that you must be constant along lines parallel to the vector AB. So let me just draw you a little picture and see what's going on. Okay? Okay, so here we've got the XY plane. So this is like the domain for the solution. And the, the U, positive U axis is coming out of the screen at you. Okay? 
So let's say I'm given a vector AB. Okay, suppose it's there. Okay, that's the vector AB. What this says is that for every line parallel to that vector, that red vector, the surface associated with the solution U neither rises nor falls along that, along that line. It just stays the same. Okay? So, let's say I just draw in this, this, this line that actually is parallel and contains the vector itself. Okay? You can say that U, the solution U, is, say, constant along this line. Okay? Let's say I draw in another line. Along that line, the solution is also constant. It might be a different constant than the, than the other one, but it just, you've just got a, basically a flat line. The surface is just a flat line. Okay? So, The solution U is constant along each line. Okay, so what is the equation, given A and B, what is the equation for these lines? Okay, so how do you come up with the equation of a line? Well, there's a few ways to do it. We already have a vector that's parallel to the line. What we can do is just use a vector that's normal to the line and look at the dot product. Okay? So, you can... use the following. They satisfy the following, right? So suppose x comma y is a point on the line. You can take the dot product with a normal vector to the line, okay? So I've just chosen it to be b minus a. Or you could have, you know, minus b positive a. This dot product is just going to be equal to a constant. Okay, so if you expand this out, so this is, this is the vector that's normal to, to these lines. So if you expand this out, you'll get the following. Okay. Now, this boxed bottom line is very important. It's called a family of characteristic equations. Okay, K is a, K is a constant here. Arbitrary constant. Okay. So, we know that U is constant along the lines that are parallel to the vector AB. Right? So, what, in fact, we've done now is that use, so, so you know, if, if C1 is the value on that line, C2 is the value on that line, etc., etc., essentially what it means is it depends, the, the value of U, the solution, depends on the, each, each line, I guess you, you, you're saying. Okay? Now the point, points on those lines satisfy this equation. Okay? So this, this is the characteristic equations. So The solution depends on which line you're, you're, you're talking about, right? So essentially, we 
we can conclude that the solution to the original problem is a function of this characteristic. Okay? So this then is the general solution to the problem. Okay? This general form, you can verify just using the chain rule, satisfies this PDE. Now, what is f here? f is an arbitrary function. Okay? It kind of plays the same role that constants of integration play with integration, ODEs, things like that. But here we've got an arbitrary function. Okay? As long as that function f satisfies the chain rule, for example, you can differentiate and show that the start equation holds. Okay? Okay? Now, let's actually just do a, do a problem and see how it works. Okay? Uh, what have I done here? Oh, yes. Okay, solve this problem. Well, here your A would be 2, your B would be 3. So... So you can just write down a solution. Okay, so the, the, hopefully you can see that the arguments are geometric. Okay, directional derivative is, is the, the real player in this, in this context. 